likely the most significant adaptation that I did for Evan uh, to enable him to do all the cutting were sleds for the table saw. Um, I went through quite a, you know, a few variations of the sleds all in an effort to keep his hands completely away from the blade at all times. This sled cuts the front and back pieces which are almost 10 inches long just under and you'll see in a little while uh, the third sled will knock the roof peaks off of each side of those little pieces. We're now at the second sled which is going to cut the sides of the birdhouses. One of the advantages of the sled is that every single piece you cut is going to be the same length. And that's uh, something that's difficult to do uh, even with a chop saw. You can put a stop on a chop saw and do pretty well. But I, I have to say, Evan does not like the chop saw. And, uh, and when I would put a stop in there, he just passed it. Just didn't like it. He, he didn't think the stop belonged there. He wanted it off. And that's, that's another challenge with special needs people. However, with the sleds, he, man, fell right in the groove. And, uh, and as I said, I went through a few variations. This final variation, I really like the guard that's up front that keeps that saw blade away from him, you know, out of sight. And the board that's on top, of course, keeps the wood nice and steady so that it doesn't move. Um, and every piece that he cuts is exactly the same size as I mentioned before. I do have a dust control system in the shop that draws all that saw dust down, or I should say most of it. That shield on the end helps, um, aids in that regard, but uh, it, you know, it's overall more healthy than Evan. I, I put the dust control system in primarily for him, and I wish I had done it a long time ago. Um, but thankfully, Evan doesn't have to breathe in the saw dust that I did for so many years, and I don't have to either. This uh, third step, we take a number of the side pieces and we cut them again for the bottoms. I help him a lot in this. He hasn't really gotten the gist of it. As you can see, every time he cuts a piece, you have to push a piece out uh, before you put the next piece in. Once we get all the bottoms cut, we're off to sled number three. And I actually tell him, get sled number three and he'll, he'll go down and find it and pick it up. Set it on the table. Once we wiggle it into its grooves, He's ready to go, man. He turns that saw on. But actually, you watch him. He puts his piece in first, and then he turns the saw on. And he goes to work, man. Um, this uh, was certainly, I think, the most important sled that I made in that. You know, getting the roof peak, peaks cut the same every single time can be a challenge with other pieces of equipment, like the chop saw that I mentioned before. This sled, he, as you can see, man, he slides it right in, chops it off, pulls it back. And you'll notice that the blade, how far forward it is. He, this is not a great perspective, but he is probably a full six, eight inches behind that blade when he's pushing that piece of wood out. And I am trying to teach him to use another piece of wood to pop that piece of scrap out. And uh, it, honestly, if you flip the, the front or back over and push it in, it will kick that piece of wood out. And you can do that again and get to the end, but I haven't quite got, got there yet with him. It all, it all takes time and patience, but I, you know, he's doing great.